Two days ago, my trusted Canon dealer around the corner called me and told me that my R5 is here. And not only the R5, but also Bell's R6. So needless to say, I didn't waste any time, went to the store and picked up both of them. That day, unfortunately, it was actually raining, so we couldn't really go out and shoot a lot, but the next day, the weather forecast was actually a lot nicer. So, I called up my friend Bianca, who is a professional model, and she was so kind to actually go on a test shoot with us. Obviously, being foremost a filmmaker, I wanted to test the video capabilities of the R5 first, but I will do a lot of testing with the R5 in portrait and sports photography modes when it comes to the still side as well in the near future. So initially, I wanted to do one big review of the R5, one for video and one for stills. But looking at my C300 Mark III video, which was almost 30 minutes long, I thought that maybe it's cooler that I actually go on several shoots and do a behind the scenes and first impressions and what I learned afterwards immediately when I'm done shooting. So this is my first behind the scenes of one of these scenarios. And the first scenario we tested was one of the scenarios I want to use the R5 in is as a dedicated film and travel camera where I don't want to pack the C300. For example, for our model shoots as well as our fashion shoots that you typically find on our YouTube channel. And I'm pretty excited. So far we've been shooting for a while and I didn't even get an overheating warning. So this might actually be a good cam for this scenario. But now let's keep shooting before the sun sets and test this camera further. So if you haven't watched the final video yet, I highly suggest you do this right now. It's only about two minutes long and I will link it up here somewhere. And then you come back to this video and I will talk about how I shot this, what kind of equipment I used and what I actually learned on my first shoot with the Canon R5. And on a side note, I'm actually filming this entire talking head on the EOS R5 in 8K for the first time. So let's actually hurry up. Maybe I should have shaved before filming myself in 8K. So the idea here was just one of our typical model fashion style videos that you're used to on this channel. And this is one of the use cases I actually like using this camera for, so I don't have to carry around the C300 all the time. And I did shoot this like I would shoot any other model video, with the minor exception that I actually did turn off the camera whenever I didn't need it. And on these kind of model shoots, when you change locations or outfits, you actually have plenty of time to let the camera cool down and I'll be honest with you I was a little uneasy at first because usually I just keep the camera on most of the time so just shutting it off is no problem but I also like to show my models what we actually have shot so that they can make some adjustments and you know they actually like to see what they're looking like on camera but here I was a little uneasy at first because I was like maybe I should turn off the camera so it doesn't overheat but in the end and I will talk about the overheating a little later in the video Video, it was all fine and it was all in my head and from this point on I just shot like it was any other video on any other camera. So the first thing I want to talk about is what equipment we actually used. I wanted to keep it simple and light so I obviously went ahead and used the R5 with a 512 gigabyte CF Express card. I also tried to fit it in my EOS R cage because I couldn't find an EOS R5 cage anywhere around and it's on back order anywhere on the internet right now. So I just fitted it into my EOS R cage and I'd say it's a 90 to 95% compatibility so it actually worked fine and I will keep using this until my R5 cage arrives. And the cage that I'm currently using is from Smallrig and the R5 cage that I ordered is also from Smallrig because I've been using a lot of Smallrig products in the past and I've always been satisfied. So like I already said I wanted to keep it simple so I only brought one lens and you might have guessed it the lens of my choice is the 28 to 72.0 because that lens is so versatile and it's super great with its 2.0 aperture it has a really smooth bokeh and I really really like using this as my sole one and only lens for most of my shoots. So this is what I went with. 
Since we were shooting video, I obviously used an ND filter and the one that I was using is from Freewell. And this is a two to five stop Freewell hard stop ND filter. And I've been really satisfied with this one. And I will do a whole video about their lineup of new variable ND filters. And I didn't have any problems with it. It has a little bit of a green tint to it, but since the R5 and basically all the R series cameras have a slight magenta tint, that actually works pretty well for my kind of style because it kind of evened it out and I got really nice footage out of this. To get my footage a little smoother, I use the top handle also from Small Rig, and this is also one that I really like because you can adjust it from the front to the back. So in theory, I could actually use the viewfinder and still keep shooting stills if I wanted to without the top handle getting in the way all the time. So this is a solution I really like and I will be experimenting with the whole R5 rig setup more in the future. And I obviously will upload a video just about that topic as well. Last but not least, I decided to not go with the internal monitor, but use an external monitor. And my weapon of choice here is the new Fieldworld LUT 6S. And I really do like this small kind of monitor. Usually I'm using a 7 inch, but since I was mostly using the autofocus of the R5, the 6 inch was basically totally sufficient. But here I still have a bone to pick with all the mirrorless and DSLR cameras that Canon brings out. And that is using an external monitor with with it because it's such a pain in the ass. First of all, you have to decide between either just using the external monitor without using the touch screen at all, or just having a clean feed on your external monitor and then having all the other settings on your internal monitor and using the touch screen as well, which is obviously fine. But when using autofocus, it doesn't even display your autofocusing fields. So you can't really see what's in focus and you can't really see if the autofocus fields are where you want them to be, if the face detect autofocus focus works or anything. So please, please, for the love of everything, Canon, give us at least the autofocusing fields on the external monitor when using a clean feed. Another thing here that I found is that you can't even switch the autofocusing fields while recording when only using the external monitor. There is no button combination you can use to actually adjust your autofocusing fields. For me on this shoot, this really wasn't a problem because I was using autofocus and the face detection pretty much 95% of the times. And here I can say, this is amazing. This is the best autofocus that I have ever used on any kind of camera. It went straight for the eye every time and the autofocus was amazing. When she was twisting and twirling, it was mostly even staying on her head for the most part. I did have some focus hunting when she was quickly turning around, but other than that, it worked flawlessly 95% of the times. And that is actually a really cool thing. Other than that, I shot the entire video handheld and I didn't use any stabilizers. The only stabilizer I used was the in-body stabilization of the Canon EOS R5. And let's talk a little bit more about this. Everybody keeps praising the in-body stabilization and when using it on the R6 with the 15 to 35, it actually was amazing. But when using it on the 28 to 70 and doing some quick pan moves, I actually had the in-body stabilization jerk around quickly from left to right and that actually made some of my shots unusable. So when doing pan movements, I actually could see the in-body stabilization working on the 28 to 70 and it did work well for the most parts but sometimes like I already said I got some really abrupt jitters that I really didn't like. After doing a little bit of research online, I did find that this might be resolved by a firmware update of my 28 to 70. I purchased this lens right when it came out and I never did a firmware update on it. So if you're interested in this, just follow me on Instagram because I constantly give updates there that aren't big enough for an entire YouTube video. So just make sure to follow me on Instagram. Let's talk about shooting modes. I basically shot the entire video in 4K 50 all eye. And I shot in 50 frames instead of 60 frames because we're in Europe and we're using the PAL system. And some of the shots were also in 100 frames. And I had absolutely no issues and the image out of this looks amazing. So the one thing that a lot of people are interested in is the overheating. And I for one am on the firmware 1.1.1. 
one, so the newest one, and I didn't have any overheating issues whatsoever. Obviously, using the Canon R5 for the first time, I was a little bit worried because I was only shooting in 4K 50 and 4K 100, but I never had an overheating warning turned on, and I basically had at least 10 minutes of recording time left at any time. And even when I started shooting and then turning the camera off and on again, it was still at 10 minutes. So I never saw anything less than 10 minutes on my remaining timer. So I feel 100% confident that for this kind of shooting, the camera won't overheat at all if you just turn it off whenever you got the time for it. Granted, we didn't shoot for so long. The entire shoot lasted about two to three hours and we did have some breaks in between when the model was changing or when we were changing locations. But overall, I'm really confident that most of the overheating issues for that kind of shooting style are actually fixed in the newest firmware. And that is something that is really great to hear for my kind of shooting. So lastly, let's talk about image quality. And here I was pleasantly surprised to say the least, because the image coming out of the R5 is amazing. Needless to say, I shot everything in C-Log, meaning I was shooting everything in 10-bit 422. And the footage is really crisp and the colors are amazing. The only thing I did have a problem with is the dynamic range. Coming from a C300 Mark III, which has an amazing dynamic range, you could definitely immediately tell the difference. Especially on the roof where we had the sun go down directly behind our model, you could definitely see that I had a really hard time keeping all the highlights from clipping for most of the video. Granted, Canon actually announced that they will add C-Log 3 to the Canon EOS R5 in the future, which should give it a little bit more dynamic range. So this is actually what I'm looking forward to and was ultimately the reason I pulled the trigger on the R5, because dynamic range is something that is so important for me, especially when mixing footage with the C300 Mark III, which I will do in future videos. I think that the dynamic range is a dead giveaway when you try to interchange footage from both of these cameras. But overall, it wasn't even that bad and I was pleasantly surprised that I could retain a lot of the details in the shadows when I was just exposing for the highlights. Color grading the footage was an absolute dream and it really didn't take me long to get the colors out of the EOS R5 that I was looking for. And as always, of course, I graded all of the footage with our Canon LUT pack. And this LUT pack works perfectly fine on the R5 as well. Just color correct your footage in the first place, throw on one of our LUTs and you quickly get the desired look that at least I was looking for. And I think the image looks actually pretty great. So I link all of our LUTs in the description below so you can check them out if you want to. So now let's talk about the one thing that I dislike the most and I already talked about this in one of my past videos and that is the H.265 files that the Canon R5 produces. Because even my newest 2020 iMac, which is completely maxed out, can't even play back the 4K 50 and 4K 100 files in 10-bit 422 and that is really annoying. For this video I just transcoded everything in ProRes, so editing was absolutely no problem, but when switching back to the full resolution and not using the proxies anymore for color grading, I can't even play back the footage after I color graded it to look what it looks like in a real motion. And that is a really annoying thing about the R5. So overall, I really like shooting with the R5 and I will do much more videos in different kind of scenarios. I will also do some tests in photography. I'm actually going to Italy next week, shooting some figure skaters on the ice. So I'm actually pretty curious about this. And if you were wondering, all the behind the scenes was shot by Bell on the R6 and the 15 to 35 RF lens. And since the overheating warning on the Canon actually popped up, I will wrap up this video right now and I hope you liked it. And if you wanna see more content coming out on the R5 and the R6 in the near future, hit that subscribe button right now. And if you did like this video, give it an actual like and I hope to see you on the next one. All right, I made it without overheating. 23 minutes and 24 seconds filming in 8K, not bad. I'm good with it.